Hey guys, Joe here with ACRM, and I'm with Elise Thompson from Candy Industry Magazine. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. All right. Well, we're here at ACRM's Candy Planning Christmas and Halloween session, and uh, Elise has been uh, doing meetings with suppliers all day. So we're going to get into some trends that uh, she's been uncovering during her meetings. But before that, can you talk a little bit about Candy Industry Magazine, your audience, and, and uh, uh, the content that you do? Sure. So Candy Industry Magazine has been in publication since 1944. We cover all aspects of the candy industry from manufacturing to retailing to equipment, trends, and of course, new products. Um, our readers are retail buyers, equipment suppliers, ingredient suppliers, and pretty much anyone else in the confectionery industry. Gotcha, so you have both sides of it, the manufacturing as well as the retailers. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great, and you've been meeting with a lot of manufacturers today throughout the whole day. So uh, uh, in your meetings, I, I guess we can break it down by the different categories of candy. Uh, what kind of trends you see? Sure, um, well this is the Christmas and Halloween session, yeah. so we get a lot of the staples that you see every mm -hmm. season. A lot of peppermint, okay. a lot of pumpkin spice, a lot of gingerbread, and of course that's great, people expect that. But there have been some things that stand out to me. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I've seen a lot of is unicorns. Unicorns everywhere. Unicorns mm -hmm. in novelty, unicorns in chocolate, unicorns in non-chocolate. And I think it, maybe it's the bright colors, maybe it's the, the whims, whimsy of it, but yeah. that's really been popular. Um, I've also seen llamas and sloths, and I think mermaids will also be coming up as another theme that you'll see in the next couple it's, of years. It's interesting you mention that because in some of our other categories, unicorns and mermaids, especially in beauty, unicorn, unicorn and mermaid themes have been very strong. For the, for the bright colors and the sparkles and all that. Yeah, yeah, and I think it has a lot to do with social media as well. Yes. You see a lot of those unicorn colors on social media, and maybe that got started with the Starbucks drink. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. But the unicorn Frappuccino, yes, yes. It was all over, and I think a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of culinary trends and retail trends that have been building off of that, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm sure we're gonna con continue to see that. Um, emojis have been around for a while, yep. but it seems like uh, manufacturers are really targeting on one emoji. And that's the poop emoji. I was just going to say, it's got to be the poop, because I saw somebody with that as well, yeah. I mean, you see it in the novelty category, you see mm -hmm. it in chocolate, um, and I don't think that's going to slow down at all, because yeah. kids love it, they think it's funny, and so it's going to keep selling. In fact, when anybody sees that shape, we had, um, I think the hotel brought us some cupcakes, <laughs> and they had frosting on the top, and of course some people were making poop emoji jokes. So. I mean, that's what it looks like, that's what people recognize, it's yep. a universally recognizable emoji, so I think we're gonna keep seeing that. Oh, definitely. And then, one other thing that I've noticed is that in the chocolate arena is that um, I'm seeing a lot more unpanned, unpolished truffles with you know, cocoa dusted on them or another powder. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because it gives it a, a premiumization, it's a premiumization factor yeah. um, and having a less processed look um, gives it the idea that it's better for you, it's healthier because there isn't any wax or anything else on it. Okay. So I feel like we'll continue to see that uh, as well. Is that a big trend that you've been seeing too, the better for you or oh. more at least natural ingredients, clean ingredients, or organic? Of course, I think Retailers in all classes of trade are looking for products that are considered clean, that don't have any color, artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no preservatives, mm -hmm. gluten-free, non-GMO, organic, the whole nine yards. Uh, consumers, especially in like a, a Whole Foods or, or healthy grocery stores are expecting mm -hmm. that. And I think that's continuing to trickle down to the other um, areas of retail. Okay, but you still do have those consumers that don't care, they want to indulge and they right. just go, all, all out. I mean, right? you have to remember that yeah. this is the confectionery industry. It's still candy. People yeah. still want what they know. They want what they like, mm -hmm. you know, so you're going to continue to see things that are, are indulgent. Okay. Any surprises? Anything, you know, really surprise you here from your meetings? Um, I think the the surprising thing was, the, of course, the, the, the sloths and the, the yeah. llamas. Okay. I didn't expect llamas, um, yeah. but I, I guess that's what the, the young people are, are uh, really liking these days. Um, but as far as the, um, the holiday stuff goes, you know, it seemed pretty consistent to me. Okay. What you would expect, gift boxes, things that you would be happy to give to your family, your loved mm -hmm. ones, friends, teachers, you know, things like that. One thing that surprised me yesterday and um, when we did the Kids' Choice Awards was just how crazy kids go <laughs> over the novelty candies especially. 
uh, especially when they come with a toy or something, uh, they just, I mean, they loved all of the different types, you know, the, the chocolate, the non-chocolate, but when we broke out the novelty candy and they saw the toys, they just went ballistic. They did, you know? they lost their minds. Yep. And of course they were really sugared up by that point, yep. but the kids want there to be something beyond just eating the product. There needs to be mm -hmm. some additional play value, whether that comes through a fan or a game or some other toy or stickers or something that they can take pictures with, like the winner, the mini selfie pops or yeah. from um, Imaginings 3, Flix yeah. Candy. They were taking pictures with that. So mm -hmm. yeah. some other interactive element is going to keep them engaged with the product a little bit longer. And, you know, that's really important. Are you seeing a lot of that? The uh, um, tie in between confectionery and social media like it, like that product it was encouraged on the packaging it had the hashtags to use for those mm -hmm. different uh, 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 products that they had but are you seeing that in other candies as well yeah absolutely um, and it's not just in uh, package retail products it's of course in restaurant desserts and places where you can go and get these big elaborate desserts people want to brag on social mm -hmm. media they want to show the cool experiences that they're having and of course that can trickle down to products and that's or retail products and that's a good thing for the brands because mm -hmm. then um, like you mentioned yesterday the the consumers are doing the advertising for you and yeah. that that is a yeah, yeah. really really important thing Great. Well, thank you again for joining us. All right, everybody, Elise Thompson with uh, Candy Industry, and the website is candyindustry.com. That's correct? correct. And you can also follow us on uh, Facebook at Candy Industry and on Twitter at Candy Industry. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bye. Joe.